Hello, I'm Brett Moss, and you're watching The Defining Moment for Creating the Culture of Conscience. Our guest today is Gayokla Nietzsche. Gayokla is a traditional healer of the Blackfeet tribe and a member of the Executive Council for the Native American Leadership Alliance. Gayokla was born in the mountains of Montana and raised in Arizona. This is Gayokla's second appearance on our program. Gayokla Nietzsche, welcome back to The Defining Moment. I appreciate you being our guest today. Thank you very much. It's uh, good to be here. It's great having you here. Thanks for coming. Our topic today is Native American spirituality. You have many testimonies of your experiences with the spiritual world, so I was hoping we could start by having you share some of your most dramatic spiritual experiences and where you overcame really life-threatening situations which threatened your well-being. You had an experience a number of years ago when you confronted an evil medicine man through confronting him, you essentially had to risk your life by engaging in spiritual warfare. Please tell us about how you overcame that kind of situation. Uh, this particular situation, I begin to say different prayers at uh, one of the reservations. I'm not going to say what reservation or what state, but uh, it was not a very good situation. Uh, there was a lot of young kids that were disappearing. And uh, it was on my eighth day of fasting. I was only fasting with water. And uh, I began to set up the prayer. And the spirit of this person came. Uh, it's very difficult to explain uh, if people are not accustomed to spiritual experiences. Uh, as to how I know it was him, or uh, it's a very different situation. As I begin my prayers, I begin to clean the spiritual atmosphere of that place. And, and there are different things that comes into you. Why is it this way? Because first there is a cloud of darkness that comes over you. And this cloud of darkness begins to numb your spiritual sensitivities. That's why you always have to do certain conditions and you always have to be on your guard, making sure that the communication that you're receiving is from the high realms of the spirit world. Uh, a lot of the spirits, they come over and, and they look nice, they appear to be nice, but they're deceiving spirits. So you always have to watch out for this uh, kind of uh, spirit world also. Uh, as I begin more into the prayers uh, for a few days, then I was beginning to feel like I was being choked. But not choked, you know, where somebody comes over and puts their, their hands on you but I was beginning to feel like a rope was being around my neck. And it was very difficult to breathe. Uh, it was, uh, I could feel the blood going from my heart to my brain. It was kind of very difficult to go through. But also my head, it was beginning to, uh, I could feel that it was like spending, swelling. swelling. Mm. Uh, I went through a few days like that, and uh, I decided. To, I say, well, I never been to a hospital. I never go to a, uh, the city doctors, but I wanted to know: is, is this thing a physical thing? So I went to have a checkup, and I was in the hospital for for a few days and uh, I was uh, at the point where I was just saying my last prayers and I said you know uh, creator I I have been in this world for so much so long you know it's, it's a short time in my life on this on this world if 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 I'm out to go into the other side and meet with you please uh, forgive me for the times that I was sure coming to other people when I insulted other people, when I was miserable and mean and nasty to other people. And I was in the 
midst of these prayers, when right through the ceiling, uh, two people came down. It was uh, spiritually. Uh, spiritually, it was uh, Father Moon and his wife. You're referring to Reverend Samyang Moon. Uh, Reverend Samyang Moon and his wife, mm. and they came right through the ceiling, and he began to assign different other spiritual people as to what to do. As I was saying in my last prayers, uh, I thought, okay, this is my time to go. From my right hand, uh, his wife came over and grabbed her hand and my hand, and then she put her hand on top of my hand this way. And he came over and put his right hand on top of my forehead. Mm. And I saw this light that came from over him right through him all over my body. Mm. All the pain was gone. And from that point on, I didn't feel any more pain. Wow. So I knew very well that this has got to be the spiritual manifestation. I was checked out from the hospital. I went home and I began to set up different prayers. And as I was setting up different prayers at that, time, at that night, I had a dream. And this dream that this medicine man was in front of me, we had a fire going. And in this, between this fire, I reached out with my hand like this, and he came and he reached out his medicine stick with his medicine bag. Mm. And he gave me his medicine stick and his bag, and I grabbed them. And I looked at him and I told him, from this point on, you have no more powers. And I put it down and I say, now your powers belong to me. Mm. That went on and at the reservation, everything was beginning to change. I went back and uh, different... Change other, for the better. Change for the better. Mm -hmm. I never saw the medicine man anywhere. Mm. But that, that was uh, one of the experiences that I had. I yeah. had many, many experiences uh, concerning the physical world, the spiritual world. Mm. And that was one where you're, you've, you're felt your own, your own life was in danger. That's when I felt that. I, th I really thought I was going to pass on. Very interesting. And I think for many of our viewers, you know, your sharing and, and the, the topics you're sharing about seem unusual, you know. Um, that, that you're so present, so aware of the spiritual reality. Um, I think the, you know, the average, pe average people aren't so aware of that. So it's very interesting what you're saying. Now you had another experience back in 1972 when you were a soldier in the United States Army. And at that point you had a confrontation with Satan. Please recount for us what happened back in 1972. I was in the military. I was in Fort Jackson, South Carolina. And it must have been when the sun is going down, about 6, 6.30 p.m. I was coming out from the mess hall. And I was in my greens. So as I walked into the barracks, I turned left and all the beds were lined up. So I went out and I took my shirt off and I put it on my full locker. And I leaned on my bed and put my hands back behind my, be my, behind my neck. And straight up, straight up, there was an office on the left side and there was an office on the right side. Between the two offices, it was a hallway. Mm. On the part of the right-hand side, on my right-hand side, there were the switches for the light. Mm. And I noticed that I could see a hand that was sliding over and it went over and shut the lights off. And then he began walking. It was a charming white person dressed in uh, civilian clothes. Uh, he was a handsome man, kind of looking like uh, Roger Moore. 
Now, was uh, this a physical person or a spiritual person? It looked like a physical person, but uh -huh. it was a spiritual person. At that time, as he was walking over, it looked human to me. Mm. But from this part of my, of my head, this voice came out and it said, this is him, the spiritual being that brought so much suffering into the world. And he spoke to me in English. How his voice sound, it was like that of the little munchkins and the uh, uh, Wizard of Oz. Mm. As he was talking, his voice was changing. Uh -huh. And uh, as he was changing, uh, this, my, this, this voice in my mind was telling me, this is the person that caused so much suffering. So I, I was aware of who he was. So he said to me, he says, uh, hello, Gayokla. I say, hi, how are you? He says, I was just passing through, and I decided to stop and make a deal with you. By then, I was very aware of who he was. And I said, I have nothing to do with you. I said, the power of the Creator has power over you. And he was laughing, and he began laughing. And I tried to speak, but nothing came out of my mouth. Nothing mm. came out. Mm. And, and I forced myself, and I forced, and I forced. It. And with the strong uh, determination, I said, the power of the Creator has power over you. Then my words came out. But at that time, when my words came out, I was sitting on my bed. I was in my pajamas. And it was already 3 o'clock in the morning. So several hours had passed. Nine hours had passed. Nine hours had passed. Nine hours had passed. And I had no recollection of what happened, how from my greens and my boots, having my boots on. And it was already 3 o'clock in the morning and being on my pajamas. I had no knowledge of those nine hours. What did I do on those nine hours? I wow. don't understand. Very interesting. So the spiritual things, you know, uh, I always had them since the time of childhood. Mm. But they become more strong and more strong. More substantial. More substantial. Sometimes I could touch the other spirits or sometimes they bump into my body. Mm. Uh, but it's, uh, it, it's always... Uh, they're very real. To me, they're very real. Yeah, very interesting. Fascinating what you're saying. Now, a few years back, you risked your life in another way by visiting the Middle East in a very conflict-ridden area at a time of high tensions. And you found yourself dodging machine gun bullets in Ramallah. Tell us how you found yourself in that situation and how you lived to tell about it. How's I was that? invited by the Universal Peace Federation uh, to go into this trip. Uh, we met with the mayor of Jerusalem and uh, we met with other dignitaries of the people in Jerusalem. Uh, after that we were invited to go into the Palestinian territory, into Gaza. And, but prior to that, two weeks prior to that, I had a dream that I went into Israel and that I was shot right mm. on the chest. Wow. So when I went into it, I had a prayer with my wife and my daughter, and I explained to my wife and my daughter, and I say, you know, if, if I don't come back, please understand that what I do is for the sake of humanity. Mm. And I went on onto that trip. When I was in, uh, in uh, Israel, the, the, trip, the dream kept coming over and over. I keep going forward. So we, by the time we had to go into the Palestinian territory, the ambassador of the U.S. told us, don't go into the Palestinian. If you go, you will die. I, my mind was determined that whatever is supposed to be is supposed to be. And that's the way Native people looks at the world, every situation that we go into. 
if, if I'm meant to go, uh, meant to go. There's a reason for everything. There's a reason for everything. So I went over there and they, we took our passports and the ambassador says, well, if you, do, if, if you get killed, when you get killed, he didn't say if you get killed, he said when you get killed, we want to have a telephone number where we can call your, your people, your relatives, uh, your relatives mm -hmm. to, let, to let them know where you are. So I gave them my passport. So we went into, into the Palestinian territory, into Gaza. We spent the night in Gaza. Uh, the following day, we were asked to go into Ramallah. Uh, so we went into Ramallah. Uh, we spent the whole day. But uh, around that part of the w world, you know, at that time that we were there, around 4.30, that's when the sun is going down. So around 4.30, uh, we were there, and I'm walking over in front of everybody. There was a group about probably about 200 people. Mm, uh, together with you? Yeah, there were all ministers and some politicians from the U.S., uh, some, uh, what do I call them, uh, uh, senators from the U.S. Uh, so I'm, I'm ahead of them, probably about 50 feet ahead of them, 50 or 75 feet ahead of everybody. So one little kid is coming around and he's telling me, uh, hey, 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 boom, boom, boom. And I keep thinking, oh, well, I wonder, he's probably telling me that uh, uh, around here there's a lot of shooting. So I keep walking, but uh, I could tell that all the houses were pushed over by bulldozers. So I wanted to see how the houses will look from the other section. So I started walking, I walked maybe about 20 feet from where all the houses were pushed over. And then I could hear this uh, 50 caliber machine gun that went on. And you could hear the do 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 And uh, I turned around to ask everybody, uh, are those guys shooting at us? Mm. But by the time I turned around, everybody was gone. Mm. I was the only one standing there, even the little boy that was with me, he was gone. <laughs> So uh, I look ahead of me, and it was the whole army wow. on the other side, the borderline with uh, Egypt. Mm. So I could see the towers with the machine guns and the tanks and all the, the shacks, you know, with the sharpshooters. And, wow. and I felt, you know, okay, well, I guess this is my time for my prayer. So I, I open my hands this way, and I begin to say my prayer. And I say, Creator. If this, is the, if this is my time for me to go for the sake of all these people, I want it to be your way, not my way, not what I want, but what you want. And I could hear the bullets coming. But for some reason, the bullets keep going by the side of my ears. Wow. Even now, still, when I say my prayers, I could still hear the bullets. Wow. It must have been about 80 bullets that went. Because I was there in prayer, and prayer, and prayer. But somehow the Creator was bringing those bullets left and right. Then I could hear this voice that said to me, he said, look to your right. And I looked to the right, and he says, walk on the red line. Mm. And I could see a, a red line, maybe about this much off the ground. Hmm. And it looked, it was like this, like clear plastic, hmm. a line like this. And I begin to walk on the red line. Wow. I was walking still in prayer. I was very relaxed. So in other words, God prepared a path for you. Yes. And I was very calm. I know that if, if, I, if I had gone too fast, I was shot. If I stopped... I was shot. Wow. I, I went on walking very normal. Mm. And I looked to the right. And when I looked to the right, there was a big telephone pole made of a wooden telephone pole. And uh, Reverend Jesse Edwards, he had a digital camera and, and he pressed the camera. And when the flash went on, the shooting changed to his camera. And I could see how all the bullets around his camera were like... Wow. He took the camera and he ran. 
by then I was out of denture. Hmm. Uh, it was an uh, experience of faith. Uh, I began to uh, set up a prayer and I told the Creator, thank you for, thank you for allowing us to come and not to retreat in the sign of danger. Wow. Excellent testimony. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate that. Who is God for the Native American people? To the Native American people, He is the true parent of humanity. Mm. That word is used by traditional people. That encapsulates a lot of things, you know, Europeans came over and they give us a word that says savage. The savage people, as we are known to the other people, savage, according to Webster, savage is an untamed person, a person without morals or without untamed, untamed person. Uh -huh. uh, that we are, un we have no, uh, no knowledge of how to behave. Kind of uncivilized. Uncivilized. In a sense. Uh -huh. To the contrary, you know, we, we are very uh, uh, spiritual people. Uh, always understanding that the Creator is our parent. Not only the parent of Native people, but the parent of the entire humanity. You know, we have stories of the three different bears. We have stories that uh, says that the, that the world was one. And through time, the world begins separating and, and leaving hu humans in different parts of Mother Earth. Mm. You know, uh, from this perspective, the spirit of the Creator, He is the parent that created all things. He created the universe, He created the sun, the moon, and the stars. He created all living creatures, and everything that, in, uh, that is alive speaks to us. Uh, the stone has a spirit, uh, the trees, uh, the flowers, the birds. That's how we get our songs, you know, the birds give, give us our songs to sing of healing. Mm. So the relationship between that Creator and, and humanity is one. Mm. Well, what happens is that uh, mankind has lost that relationship. Yeah, okay, very clear. Now, what is the Native people's understanding about the origin of evil? Coming to understand uh, it brings me back uh, when I first met uh, uh, Dr. Samyan Moon. Mm. Uh, he explained to me that, uh, that at the very beginning of history, the first human ancestors uh, had a sexual relationship. I took it very uh, arrogantly. I, I, it was very difficult for me to digest the thought. Hmm. But when I came back, the medicine people, the, the old people, the medicine people told me, to whom you were arrogant. And I so, looked... So spiritually they perceived that you had been arrogant. That I, yeah, I never, I never told them anything. Just they perceived that spiritually. They could see it right through my spirit that wow. I was arrogant. Hmm. So when I looked to my left, I saw the Creator. Hmm. And I saw his angry face at me. Hmm. And he played on me like a video machine where I could see myself being arrogant hmm. to Dr. Moon. Wow. And I said, please forgive me. Hmm. American Indians, we never bow to any human person. Hmm. That's not part of your tradition. It's not part of our ways. Uh -huh. So when I saw Father Moon again, I saw the Creator and His body went into His body. Mm. There was no doubt in my mind or my heart in behalf of the medicine people who this man is. Mm. I went there and I did a full bow. And I say, please forgive me for being arrogant and not understanding who you are. Mm. And I looked 
of the life of society in relationship to men and women, how is so severely looked that that relationship, it brings all the misery of humanity. Through the misuse of sexuality. The misuse that when a person enters the sweat lodge. You know, a sweat lodge is a Indian it's, it's, term. It's our church. Which means church. It's our okay. church. It's, a, it's your form of church. It's our form of church. Okay. When a person enters and they desecrate that place into a sexual relationship, mm. or they have a sexual relationship in that place, mm -hmm. that place has to be destroyed. Wow. And he has to be moved. Wow. You know? Why is it that it's so sensitive? Then I begin to understand that the, that the revelation that Father Moon had, it had to be true. Mm. So when I teach at the kids at the reservations, I emphasize that point very strongly. Mm -hmm. that, the, that the origin of evil has to do with... The origin of the bad medicine comes because of that relationship. Mm -hmm. From our original ancestors. For our, from our original ancestors. Mm. Uh, in, in our ways, we say that, that there's many people from the north to the south, the east and west. Everywhere you go, there's people. But there's very few human beings. A human being is the one that gives of himself. Mm. A human being is the one that gives and gives and gives and never asks anything in return. Mm. This kind of human being... I know Reverend Moon, Father Moon is this kind of being, one with the Creator. Wow, interesting. Hey, I know that you're also involved in a very interesting project to promote peace in the Middle East by using peace totem poles. Please tell us about that project. Uh, they can go to, uh, people can go to our website, okay. you know, which is uh, www.nalacircle.org. Okay. And go in and see the pictures of the totem poles. Okay, great. And if uh, you didn't catch that website, you can go to our website in the Defining Moment, and we have a link to your website there. Yes. Uh, the time when I met with the uh, mayor of Jerusalem, mm. we uh, proposed this uh, issue for the sake of the unity of the three faiths, mm. you know, the, the Jewish people, the Muslims, and uh, the Arabs and all, all the people and the, and the Christians and the, and the Christians mm. very important you know please Christians don't become arrogant mm. help out with peace you know like I told the mayor of Jerusalem this issue is not to bring peace is not only a part of the American Indians it's a part of the Muslims it's a part of the Jewish people it's a part of the Christians uh, every faith group every has, faith has, has, has a responsibility has a, has a responsibility you know excellent Gayo Klanichi our time is up thank you so much for coming back and being our guest here today I look forward to having you back again thank you very much you've been watching the defining moment for creating the culture of conscience you can find us on the internet at www.definingmoment.tv thanks for watching and have a great day